the man but when the glory comes it will be out hi everybody and welcome back to humble for christ i hope that everybody's doing fine out there i hope that y'all are all great today um today i'm coming to speak to you guys about something that that's kind of been heavy on my heart for a long time since i've been living in israel i face more discrimination than i have living in america Yes, this is the truth for me. I don't know for other people, but for me, I have. Um, the first time I was called the N-word, a nigger, was here in Israel. The first time I was looked at, like, why are you here, was here in Israel. Discrimination and racism is very thick in the southern part of Israel. It's light in the northern part. In the northern part of Israel, it's like living in America. It's light, you know, it's police brutality too, but it's light meaning that, you know, it's not something you have to deal with constantly. But here in the south, uh, the southern part of Israel is something you have to deal with constantly. You get on the bus and you're looked at like, why are you even sitting on this bus? You get on the bus and people look at you like, you know, like I said, why are you sitting there? Or you go to the grocery store, you're getting stared at, you you know, um, it's it's relevant everywhere here in the South. And it's very heavy. So, so anyway, as I was saying, it's, it's very heavy here in the South. Um, my daughters, you know, for example, the first time they were called the N-word was at their school. And in America, in Texas, they didn't have to deal with that in the part of Texas we lived in anyway. I'm pretty sure other people in Texas may have, may have experienced intense racism during today's time, but the part where we live, we didn't. And my daughters never got called that name. They never even heard that as far as being used towards them as derogatory or anything like that. So it was definitely something that was, you know, very, it was very, mind-blowing to me like oh my gosh you, are you serious like in the holy land you're calling me a nigger right now this is not okay you know and so anyway well let me get to the point the reason I made I wanted to do this video right now is to talk about discrimination in Israel discrimination is so heavy in Israel that when you're trying to get an apartment and you go into the office they can shake your hand, smile in your face, and tell you, yeah, we have apartments available, everything. As soon as you leave the office, they don't want you contacting them no more. They don't really want to talk with you anymore. They will make up every story they can for, for them to avoid you. That happened to me just today and all this week. I went into a REMAX office, and I was looking for an apartment, you know, um, because we're trying to move soon. You know, not right now soon, but like in two months or so. So that's soon. So, you know, you start looking early so that you have a prospective place that you're moving to, which makes sense. It's what responsible adults do, right? Okay, you know, I feel like an adult sometimes. I'm like, I am an adult. I'm grown. Okay, it's exciting. <laughs> but anyway, so, you know, um, I did that. And I, you know, I'm thinking like, I'm being big, let's go to this office, let's talk to the, you know, the retailer and see what we can get, what we can do, you know. So we did that. Me and my husband, you know, I had talked to her over the phone. And then I guess she probably thought I was white. I'm not even going to lie. She probably thought I was white because when I got to the office, she was like, oh, you're Charity and oh, you're Yehoshaphat. And I said, yes, yes, hello, how are you doing, you know. And so we talked or whatever. She said, okay, I'll schedule us some visits or whatever. And so I text her back. I said, okay, so are we going to go visit the apartment this, you know, on Tuesday this week? Because that's what she said. So when Tuesday came, no, this was, this was last week. So what I'm talking to y'all about happened a week ago, but what I'm about to tell y'all happened today. So anyway, this was last week, mind you. Okay. Ah, one of the many joys of Israel. Awesome. Anyway, so... <laughs> Last week, when we had talked to her in the beginning of last week on that Sunday, we asked her, you know, she said, I have an apartment to show on Tuesday so we can see it on Tuesday. Cool. We said, okay, cool. We're here from you Tuesday. We left, you know, everything's good. She's all smiling and, you know. So anyway, text her on Tuesday. Guess what happened on Tuesday? 
she texts us she texts us back she didn't call us back she didn't answer our calls i called her my husband called her he called her about four times i called her twice and then i text her more than once she didn't answer back Finally, my husband just sent her a voice message and said, hey, what's going on? Is there a problem? You know, we were supposed to go look at an apartment today. Is it still available or not? And she said, it's irrelevant. And we said, okay, that's fine. So anyway, we, you know, she said, well, something happened with them. It's irrelevant. He found a new person, whatever. We said, okay, fine. You know, that's not a problem. That sounds normal. It happens. But for it to happen in a row, no. So we text her on Wednesday. We said, hey, there's another apartment that we see this listed under you. Can we go see that one? tomorrow so we we text her that on tuesday night and she said you know sure let me look i'll check it out blah blah wednesday morning i call her i say hey hey can we go and check out the apartment she says oh no that's irrelevant and then my husband texts her that same afternoon and she said all i don't have anything right now everything is irrelevant i don't have anything you know there's nothing available there's nothing there Right. If there was nothing there and nothing available, guess when you could have told me that when I was sitting in front of your face, you could have said there's nothing available. That's a lie. So you're lying to me now because you saw what I look like. You saw my skin color. You saw who I was and you thought to yourself, oh, I don't want to deal with them. I need to be nice, play nice and then make up an excuse not to see them. So what happened today was she kind of got confronted. Because the person that so-called said everything was irrelevant, she was still posting stuff on the Facebook page that sells and rents apartments. So the apartment that I saw that I really wanted to rent, um, I sent her a picture of it and then I sent her a voice message about it. She and, you know, I said, I asked her in the voice mes message, I said, is this apartment still relevant? Yes or no? Because recently you told me that it wasn't relevant. When I don't like how I'm looking. Hold on, you guys. One second. There we go. Now you can see me better. Okay. Anyway, I'm back now. Okay. But anyway, so, okay. Back to the point. Anyway, I sent a voice message, and in the voice message, I said, Can, um, I said, there's the apartment still posted on the Facebook page that you told me was irrelevant. Why is it still there if it is not relevant anymore? Can you please help me to understand that? Because that's the apartment that that's the apartment that me and my husband are interested in. So can you help me understand what's going on? Why is it still there? So anyway, she responds with, yeah, it's still available, but the lady wants a full year of rent in advance. I don't know if she think I'm stupid. Or she think, I don't know. Ain't nobody in their right mind about to pay a full year in advance for an apartment. Sorry, most people are not about to do that. If they're going to do that, then that means they have enough to go buy a house. So that makes sense to go buy a house, not do that. That's what checks are for. Now here in Israel, apartments work by checks. Most apartments, they want you to get checks, order checks, and then have the checks set up to your account to where they can withdraw those checks every month. That's how it works. Now, since she didn't realize that I knew that, she sent me a text lie because she said, oh, uh, they want a whole year in advance up front. No, they don't. Anyway, so skip to the next, skip to the next message. See, then she sends me a voice message that, no, first I respond to that message. I say, oh, okay, well, that's fine. Then I didn't realize they wanted a whole month and a whole year worth of rent in advance. So that's fine then. Don't worry about it. Then, now, we could have been finished right there. Everything would have been good. Then I would have been like, okay, I mean, that's just some people. Some people, that's what they want. That's what they want. There are people in Israel that will ask for that. There, there are. And there are people in Israel that will pay that because they don't want to have to pay rent every month. But majority of the people in Israel are not going to do that. They're going to get their checks and you're going to get your money every month. And that's it, <laughs> you know, like normal. So <laughs> anyway, back to what I was saying. <laughs> now, we would have been done right there. We would have been finished. But no, you guys, this is what she had to do. She had to go and send me a voice message. Now, listen to what the voice message said. I feel like y'all checks are already invalid and y'all checks are not 
operative, meaning they're not relevant, meaning they're not good checks. How would you know whether my check is good or not? You haven't even got my check to check it out, to call my bank to make sure that everything is good with, with our account, nothing. You haven't done any of that. You haven't talked to our landlord to ask him about how our how we were as tenants, nothing. You haven't done any of that. What you just did was tell me that you were discriminating against me because of my color. Just with that one message, she was telling me, I don't wanna deal with you because you're black, real simple. So, I sent her a voice message back. I told her, I said, okay, that's fine. I said, you know, what you just showed me is that you choose to discriminate against me. That's fine. You can keep it. I said, you won't hear from me again because I understand now that you were making a choice based off of what I looked like. And I said it just like that with no problem, with all bravery inside of me. I said it just like that. You made a choice based off of what I look like and not according to the information you actually knew about me. No. So you're discriminating against me. I don't appreciate that. And I don't. you don't have to hear from me again. Thank you for telling me the truth and showing me the real issue because the real issue was your problem with what I looked like. And I said, you just probably caused that owner of that apartment to lose somebody that would have been good for them because of your discrimination against my skin color and against what I looked like. So, then she tried to make it right at the end by saying, okay, send me a picture of the check and okay, send me, you know, uh, send me your landlord's number. I'm like, no, by now I don't have to deal with prejudice. I don't have to deal with racism and I don't wanna deal with it. I don't have to deal with discrimination and I'm not gonna deal with it. So. You want to act like that? You definitely just lost a client. So, real simple, you know. I try to be nice and say, okay, you know, I'm going to think about it. You know, I'm going to see if I can get a check, one of my husband's checks, you know. And then I'm going to see if we can talk to our landlord and he can talk to you. For what? Because the last message she's going to get from me is, don't even worry about it. We already found a different place. Thank you, though. Have a nice day and have a good life. Real simple. Because I like to deal with stuff peacefully. I represent the Lord Jesus. We got to deal with stuff peacefully. I don't cuss people out. We ain't doing that. But what we're not going to deal with is discrimination. We're not going to deal with that. So I will confront that. I will say something about that. And I sure did. And I think at the end of that message, she was sitting there like, I mean, she was right. Yeah, I was right because that's what you were doing. You were discriminating against me because of my skin color. You can't sit there and say, Oh, well, no, you have bad checks. How do I have bad checks? And you haven't seen it. You haven't looked at it. You haven't called the bank. So how are you? De what are you determining my bad checks off of? What? Okay. It's called this? Yeah, it's called this. That, yeah. Discrimination is evil. It's evil, and it should not, it should not be allowed to ever be done to you. doesn't matter what color you are. I've seen discrimination done within the race, outside of the race, outside between races. I've seen it. I've seen discrimination here in Israel with Russians and Israelis. I'm like, are you serious? Like, y'all are the same color, skin color, technically, y'all are the same. They're like, no, but she Russian, she Jewish, and I don't lie. Like, I've seen it. I've worked, I've worked here in Israel to the point where I can see how certain Russians treat certain Jewish people. I've seen how certain Jewish people treat the Orthodox Jewish people. It's, it's psychotic. It's evil. It's not good. There's nothing healthy about that. And something has to be said when it's done so it can be corrected. Something has to be said when it's happening so it can be fixed. So it doesn't continue. So if it's happening to you or if you see it happening to somebody, y'all speak up, say something. And don't be afraid to say something. Don't be. Don't even care how that person is going to look at you. But say something, you know. Have the bravery and the courage to say something, you know. And, you know, you guys, I enjoy sharing videos with you guys. And I hope that y'all write me and tell me what else y'all want to hear about. What else do you want to know about Israel? You know, if you're not here and you don't live here, what else do you want to know about Israel? If you're from America or from Texas or, you know, from my home, Texas, where, you know, if where you know if you're a person that's never been to Israel at all and you just want to know then I'll tell you there is good things and bad things about it but the bad thing about it is that racism is very heavy here um, in the south 
in the northern part, you have a better chance of actually, you know, achieving more, getting things done, you know, and you don't have to fight so hard for it. Here you have to fight really hard to get things done because it's a stigma put on everybody from how recent people have done things that created this huge discrimination stigma against the African Americans in the southern part of Israel. And you know, it's sad, but it's here and it's relevant and it's prevalent here. So it's something that we have to face. It's something that I have to teach my girls how to deal with, how to say something about, how to speak up for, you know. And I never in my life thought that I would have to teach my daughters how to defend themselves against the N-word or things like that. Because I never went through that when I was growing up. Nobody ever called me the N-word growing up in Texas. Yes, in the South, okay? Nobody ever called me the N-word. I was born in 1988. I ain't never heard nobody call me nigga except my, you know, my own family or whatever. You know, we sitting there like, I mean, nigga, please, you know, like that. That's it. But, it never, <laughs> you know, even today, like, I don't use that word around my girls because I don't want us to get comfortable in talking like that with each other. We, you know, we think that the N-word is so okay to just walk around calling each other niggas and stuff. It's really not because it's the same meaning whether you look it up. You know, people say we've tried to def redefine that. No, you haven't. It's the same meaning. Nigger and nigger is the same exact meaning. It doesn't matter what you do to it, how you spin it, how you make it sound. You, you know, like, oh, I made it sound like it represented, like, that's my homie, that's my brother. Then let him be your homie or your brother. He ain't got to be your nigga because nigga just represent ignorant fool. That's that's the one definition for it, period. It's ignorant fool. I ain't neither of that. I ain't, I ain't that at all. So you can call me Negro. Negro actually means black in Spanish. So you can call me Negro. That's fine. That's fine. Look it up. The word Negro is black. So look it up. That's fine. But yeah, so that's the only words my daughters hear me use. They hear me say Negro. Now, if I say nigger, it's because I'm talking to somebody who is acting like a nigger. But if you wasn't acting like that, then, you know, I don't call you that. You have to literally be acting like an ignorant fool to get called a fool. So just saying, you guys. So anyway, we have to be conscious about everything we do. We have to be conscious about it, how we speak to one another, about, you know, how we live every day and how we how we look at each other every day. It's important. We're all people here put on this earth by the same God who put breath in our body. It's the same breath. It's the same blood. There is no different from me to you. So let's love each other. Let's be there for one another. Let's help each other. Let's lift each other up, you know. All right, you guys. Thanks for watching. I hope y'all enjoyed the video. I hope you share the video with anybody you know that's experienced discrimination or yourself. And I hope that I get comments from you guys. Let me know, you know, what I could change, what I could do different, what you want, you know, what you want to see, whatever it be. All right. Thank you guys for watching my channel, and I hope y'all have a blessed day. Hands to the heavens, no man, no weapon Formed against, yes, glory is destined Every 